Okay, good morning, everyone. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for uh, joining this session. So uh, my name is Nirbhat Chaube, and I work for MariaDB Corporation. And my primar uh, primarily, I work on um, MariaDB Galera cluster. So uh, in this session, I mean, I have prepared this session to a level between beginners and advanced, so that uh, people at every level sort of get something out of it. So uh, just to begin with, I would like to know how many of you have tried a Galera cluster? Wow, OK. And uh, is anybody using it in production too? Wow, great. So uh, just to begin with, um, um, before that, I just wanted to share that uh, MariaDB Galera cluster is basically um, MariaDB plus a library called Galera, which is out of a different company called Codership. It's a Finnish company. And uh, so these two join together to, to basically bring in the uh, clustering capability in MariaDB as well as MySQL cluster or MySQL server. Yeah, so this morning I just found this interesting uh, quote from an American comedian, which I think suits really well to the distributed systems. It sort of defines the expectation we have uh, toward the distributed system, as in we expect it to be running all the time. Even if a part of it comes down, we expect the availability to be there. So yeah, so I'll start off my presentation with a quick introduction to uh, what is MariaDB Galera cluster and some key features that it provides. So as I said, it's, uh, it's MariaDB server plus the clustering functionality it gets using the Galera library. So uh, MySQL or MariaDB, uh, historically, I mean, there was a replication feature, but it was asynchronous, as in you can uh, connect multiple slaves to one master, and then uh, the master, the data from the master will asynchronously get onto the slave. But the asynchronous was the key point here, as in there can be lags. And uh, so what uh, people used to do is um, uh, normally they will route all the writes to the master and make sure that reads happen through the slaves. But um, because of this lag, we wanted a better technology using which you can basically write to any of the nodes. And that's what uh, Galera cluster provides. So it's a synchronous replication mechanism wherein the uh, uh, updates are uh, synchronously replicated to all the nodes connected to the cluster. And then you can uh, query by connecting to any of the nodes, like uh, using the native tools which are available for MySQL slash MariaDB. So uh, if, if time permits, I can show you a small, quick, um, demo of how it works, just a simple demo. And uh, as I said, uh, once the cluster is set up, you can read or write from any of the nodes, as in you can uh, throw a select or insert on any of the node, and it is expected to work in a synchronous fashion. And uh, uh, another mechanism uh, or a uh, uh, plus point of using uh, Galera cluster is um, whenever it finds that a uh, node is non-consistent, as in, say, while it was applying a write set, something wrong happened, and node actually became uh, out of sync with the rest of the cluster, the node is actually kicked out, and which means it won't perform any further operation to avoid further inconsistency. So that's a cool thing, because uh, having inconsistent nodes in one cluster is not a good idea. So Galera takes care of it automatically, and it throws out the inconsistent node from the cluster. Let's say you have a cluster of um, four nodes, and you want to join one. You can easily connect one on top of it, and, and everything, the membership control will be taken care of automatically. And uh, uh, there is something called true parallel replication. We do have parallel replication in 
in a master slave architecture but in uh, galera cluster the parallelism comes at the row level as in uh, when a query or an update hits one of the nodes the update is replicated to all the uh, other nodes which are actually slave in respect to this query and the updates are applied uh, can be applied in parallel on all other nodes with multiple threads and uh, as i said uh, uh, the look and feel to a client will be as uh, the client is accessing a standalone server there won't be a difference and, and last and final point is it's really really easy to set up a cluster um, i mean it's just a matter of running a few scripts last week i was trying to uh, simulate this using docker but uh, it's not complete now but yeah people have started doing it and that's setting up a cluster using docker and all that stuff right so here is a simple uh, diagram that sort of represents what uh, a cluster looks like uh, as you can see uh, these nodes uh, labeled as n1 n2 and n3 so they are uh, MariaDB server basically and underneath that uh, in, in the greenish color, I'm not sure what that color is, but uh, that's the, uh, a patch which basically um, gives MariaDB the clustering capability. That's called WSREP patch. WSREP is basically write set replication. And then uh, on, uh, at the bottom is uh, Galera replication, which is the actual replication, I mean, which provides the synchronous capability. Um, yeah. Now talking of the versions that are available right now, um, MariaDB currently has 5.5 5 and 10.0 uh, in GA, uh, which means they are ready for production. So uh, whenever a community server version releases, it takes like one or two weeks for the same version of Galera release to come out. So the last version that got released is 5.5.43 and 10.0.19 and uh, equivalent version of Galera servers are out as well, have been released. So they kind of are in sync with uh, the standalone releases, standalone server releases. But the third one, that is 10.1.4, uh, what we have done is we have merged the code base of Galera and uh, the standalone server, which means we have everything together now. Uh, there won't be any separate package uh, for Galera server which means the standalone server itself is ready to, um, to is actually Galera ready. Uh, but uh, uh, it's, it's in beta right now, so yeah. If you want to use it for testing purpose, you can, but uh, it's not ready for production yet. And then um, uh, MariaDB community uh, uh, or foundation publishes our makes available the packages for all major Linux, uh, Linux distributions. And uh, like for all the, yeah, Linux, uh, like RHEL, Ubuntu, Debine, OpenSUSE and stuff, so yeah. Okay, so that was a brief introduction of what uh, MariaDB Galera cluster is. Now um, I'll quickly jump onto uh, the way you can set up a cluster. And while covering these points, I'll uh, try to point the important things which one should keep in mind while setting up a cluster. So um, in order to start a cluster, there are certain mandatory things that uh, we need to keep in mind. Um, so uh, all these bullet points are basically system variables which are mandatory for running uh, MariaDB Galera server. Uh, the first one is the WS Rep provider. Now, WS Rep, uh, as I said, is a short for um, write set replication. So, what happens is whenever an update happens on one of the nodes, that update or that delta is actually replicated to all other nodes. Now, that delta is write set. And, um, okay, so WS Rep provider is basically uh, the library that that will give the synchronous capability. So currently it's libgalerassm.so, and that's the library that we need to use. 
And this library itself is out of uh, codership. It's a separate company. And then if you do not set this thing, this variable, that is, if you set WS rep providers equal to none, uh, your server will be as good as a standalone server. Now, um, the second one is um, WS rep cluster address. It is the IP address of the node, uh, of any of the nodes in the cluster. As in, let's say you have a cluster uh, which is already existing, and you have a new node which wants to join to the cluster. Using this option, you basically point the new node to join the cluster. So WS rep cluster address is, um, it takes the IP address of any of the nodes, which is already part of the cluster. And it's, it's, it's not just one single IP. You can actually provide multiple IPs separated by commas. And, uh, and the third one is bin, uh, bin log format. So if you're familiar with, uh, familiar with um, the traditional replication uh, of MySQL MariaDB, uh, it provides three uh, different formats for replication. One is row-based replication, statement-based replication, and mixed replication. Now, in statement-based replication, we, we just replicate the statement that was hit to the server, be it insert, select, update, anything. We just uh, replicate that particular statement. But that has its own disadvantages. And, uh, and the, the most important one in terms of Galera is you cannot derive the keys out of that uh, command. So that's why there is a limitation here, is that you have to use row-based replication. So row-based replication, you are actually replicating the entire uh, change. So it's not, just, it's not the command, it's the chain that you're replicating. Now change has all the keys and rest of the data. So using the key, uh, Galera can base, uh, internally find if there is a conflict between multiple nodes. But if you talk about statement-based replication, there is no way to do, do that uh, particular conflict detection. And that's why we need a row-based replication format. And uh, it, it is a mandatory setting. And the final thing is the default storage engine. Um, so Galera, or, uh, in principle, requires a storage engine which is transactional. Because let's say uh, your application is connected to two nodes, which both uh, and both are trying to uh, update same row. So which means in that situation, just only one should win, and the other should be rolled back. And that's why we need. That's where we need transactional capability. Uh, in uh, in MySQL MariaDB world, uh, currently InnoDB and TalkuDB are the prominent uh, engines which provide transactional capability. And that's why uh, InnoDB is the default setting right now. Because, and support for TokuDB is in progress, but uh, yeah, there is no commitment yet. So yeah, another key thing uh, while you're setting up the cluster is um, we have to make sure that the number of nodes that you're connecting to the server are uh, even even because uh, when there are equal, it's, it's a classical uh, uh, state machine replication problem that how many nodes uh, should be there in the cluster. Uh, let's suppose that we have, uh, sorry, uh, did I say even? It's odd, actually. <laughs> so yeah. So uh, let's say we have even number of nodes. So what can happen, uh, uh, say, during network partitioning, if the cluster divides into two equal parts and both party thinks that they are in majority, they'll start taking new updates. And, and the, the, the data will go out of sync. So to avoid that, uh, that's called split brain, basically. So split brain uh, is, is actually not good for a cluster, because then we'll have two versions of the data. And uh, which is a big problem. So to avoid that, uh, it is always recommended to have uh, odd number of nodes. Yeah, this time I'm correct. So, so which means three, five, and so on. And uh, 
let's say you do not have a machine which, uh, which is powerful enough or which doesn't have enough disk and that. So you can even use a Galera arbitrator as a, as a, as a node. So you can have two MariaDB uh, nodes. And instead of third, you can uh, use a Galera arbitrator. So it's, it's a stateless uh, daemon, but it does uh, count as one of the members. So it will keep the, uh, keep the uh, overall cluster um, protected from the split brain scenario. Yeah, so once your uh, setup is in place, you can bootstrap the very first node by using the first two commands, that is service MySQL bootstrap or start with WSREP new cluster. So this has to be done for the first node uh, which is going to form the cluster, or first node of the cluster. Once the first node is up, then you can start uh, you can start other nodes by basically pointing to this node, and uh, the third one is is the third way to actually bootstrap a node or bootstrap a cluster. Uh, so with this empty uh, gcom, what you're saying is so gcom is usually followed by an IP address, but in this case it's empty because it's the first node. And, and which is logical. It is not pointing to any of the other nodes because it's the very first node of the cluster. So using these three options, you can bootstrap the node or start the node. And once the nodes are in place, as in once the first node is up, um, and uh, let's say the other nodes start to join the cluster, uh, it needs a state transfer. So state transfer is the transfer of, in, in terms of database, the transfer of entire database, database objects from one node to another. So that the joiner node becomes the replica of the first one. And then once it is in sync with the cluster, it'll, it, it'll be basically part of the cluster and start taking queries. So in, um, in Galera cluster, there are two uh, kinds of snap, uh, state transfer. The first one is snapshot state transfer, which is basically a complete copy of data from one node to another. So the first node is called donor, and the, the other one is joiner. Now, uh, so that's snapshot state transfer. And the second one, which was introduced a little later, is called incremental stat, uh, state transfer. So it is something... Um, where let's say there was a node which was already part of the cluster and it has some state, but it was taken out of the cluster for some maintenance or something, and then now it wants to join back. So it has some state, but it is not in sync with the cluster. So when it joins back, Galera detects that, okay, it already has some state. Uh, I do not need to perform an entire snapshot transfer. So it will just send the incremental uh, write sets which are missing on this node. So that's incremental state transfer. So now coming back to the first one, which is snapshot state transfer, uh, there are multiple methods uh, currently available uh, which, can be, uh, which can be used, actually. They all have their own strengths and weaknesses. Uh, the first one is... Uh, WSREP SST rsync. So it, it uses rsync, actually, daemon and client, to transfer the state from one node to the other. Uh, the, the second mechanism is extra backup and extra backup version two. Now, these, these two methods require uh, extra backup tool from Percona. And uh, using that, you can transfer the state too. And last one is MySQL dump. So it's the classic MySQL dump tool, which basically dumps the data on the joiner, uh, donor node and transfers it to the joiner node. Now, um, in, out of these four, extra backup is, uh, I mean, it takes lock for least amount of time. So for huge amount of data, uh, this is considered uh, the best option or best choice. 
then um, the SST API itself is quite simple, and uh, using which you can write your own uh, SST impl uh, implementation. For example, let's say these four uh, or broadly three uh, methods, if they do not suit your needs, you can actually implement, implement one for you. So or, or these, these four are basically scripts, which are run on joiner and donor node. And the uh, last thing is uh, WS Rep SST Donor. It's, uh, it, it's another setting or system variable which you can set to force uh, the usage of one of the donor nodes. For example, if we omit this thing, there are four nodes and a node is trying to connect to the cluster. Galera can decide to pick any node as uh, a donor node. Now, when donor starts donating this state, it temporarily gets out of the node. So, in, in order to donate uh, the state. So using this option, you can force Galera to pick any one of the nodes that are already there. It's again a comma separated list of names of the node. You can even provide name to each and every node. And uh, now we talked about SST. Now incremental backup um, is possible because um, every node maintains a cache or uh, in circular fashion about all the updates that it is doing on the, um, on the node, on the local node. So every node has a copy of a cache of write sets. Now in incremental backup, what happens is Galera, um, the joiner node joins with a particular sequence number. I mean, it is requesting for a particular sequence number that look, I have all the transactions till say 1,000 sequence number. So if you have all the transactions after 1,000, just give me those. So the, the joiner node joins with this intention. Galera sort of looks at all the nodes to see which node has all these missing transactions and then picks that as a donor and and then the incremental uh, or delta basically gets transferred from that node. And if this is possible, then Galera will always first prefer IST. And if that's not possible, it will uh, fall back to SST. Then uh, schema upgrades is, uh, OK. I mean, in, in an evolving application, we always need to change the schema. Our schema is basically the DDLs. We need to alter the table based on our changing needs and stuff. Now, um, sch schema changing is a bit tricky on a live system because um, you might be having um, many applications already querying other nodes. And let's say if you change the schema on one of the nodes, it might, uh, first is it has to be backward compatible because um, the, I mean, the schema change might break the existing queries. I have a small example which I'll be presenting in a couple of slides. So uh, Galera provides two mechanisms to basically upgrade schema. One is, the first one is total order isolation, where, uh, and the second is rolling schema upgrade. Uh, the total order isolation is the def default method, and uh, where master first, uh, at the parsing stage, master detects that, okay, there is a DDL. So what it does, at the parsing stage, it'll take the, uh, that particular DDL command and send it to all the nodes across the cluster uh, at the parsing stage. And then it will proceed with the execution. And Galera will also make sure that uh, this particular DDL happens at the same slot. And that's why it's called total, or total order. Now, uh, because of which it, uh, the DDL actually executes at, at the same time or in the same slot on all the nodes. Now, the problem is, uh, uh, if the execution, if the DDL command is, uh, is going to take time, it's a big alter table, for example, it will stall the entire cluster. If it's short and quick, that's okay. But if it is going to take time, 
uh, TOI or total order isolation might not be the best option. But it is uh, enabled by default. So you're creating a table. It will right away get replicated to all other nodes. And the bin log format internally used for this is statement for obvious reasons, because you are just transferring the, the, uh, the query or the DDL command. On the other hand, uh, rolling schema upgrade, or RSU, uh, what internally happens is when you, uh, when you execute a DDL command on one of the nodes, the node will get desynced, I mean desynced from the cluster, and the command gets executed and during this period, whatever, uh, uh, whatever writes actually come onto the, or hit the node will get buffered. And the buffering makes sure that, okay, we are not missing anything. And once the DDL has performed, the node syncs back, picks up all the buffered updates, and basically syncs back in, into the cluster. Now, because of this, the DDL itself has not got replicated on all other nodes. But the plus point is, uh, it has not stalled all the cluster, uh, the, the DDL operation. But this basically turns out that uh, because of this, it's a manual operation, as in you will have to now manually run all uh, the DDL on all the nodes, one by one. Uh, and because of which, because we are, we are going in one by one fashion, we have to make sure that the uh, the schema changes are backward compatible. Uh, I have tried to come up with the simplest uh, example which might help you understand what is this backward compatibility. For example, let's say there is a table with, with two columns, and uh, the application inserts in this particular fashion. For example, insert into T, column one, column two, two integers. Now let's say using rolling schema upgrade, uh, somebody runs the red, uh, the first alter command on the, on the node. So what uh, it, this command is trying to do, it's trying to add a column between column one and column two. So it, it, it actually changes the order. So the, the, the alter table will work fine on one of the nodes. Now, when, it, um, when the data actually comes in, the insert, those insert query, query will start failing. So this is not a backward compatible alter command or schema change. So, and that's why we sh uh, there is the second alter, which is backward compatible. As in, even after running this alter, your inserts will work fine until you go and uh, update your application as well. So, I mean, this is one of the simplest examples I could think of. So that's why uh, in rolling schema upgrade, one has to make sure that the, uh, that, that the uh, schema changes are backward compatible. Um, so in Galera, actually, there are multiple ports which are opened. So there is one communication between um, so when, when nodes are connected, they are connected uh, using TCP. And uh, by default, the changes are replicated in a uh, non-encrypted way. So there is an option to even encrypt the, the communication or traffic between the nodes um, using, different, uh, using SSL. So following are the, uh, I mean, the two options uh, that I've mentioned here are the bare minimum that you can use to encrypt your communication between the nodes. So which is socket, SSL cert, and SSL key. Now providing these certificate and key, um, you can um, encrypt the data or communication between the nodes. One important thing to note here is the certificate and key pair has to be copied on all the nodes of the cluster. It has to be same on all the nodes. And uh, IST comes under this in, falls under this encryption, as in the IST traffic is encrypted. But on the other hand, SST is not affected by this particular encryption. Because uh, state transfer, snapshot state transfer 
is taken care by different scripts. As we said, uh, for example, rsync uses a mechanism which is outside the server. So it does not get uh, encrypted. But IST, on the other hand, is encrypted. So how to secure the SST? Uh, the uh, extra backup script provides uh, its own encryption mechanism. So using the extra backup options, you can encrypt the SST, which happens over extra backup. But uh, rsync and MySQL dump are not. Uh, they do not support encryption as of now. And uh, yeah, in the initial introduction, I talked about parallel replication. So, so the parallel replication actually comes at the um, slave node, which is trying to apply the write sets from the master node. So the, the master and slave terminology is, is, is just to represent that master is one where the initial command was hit. And rest of the nodes are slave because they are trying to apply the changes which was done on master. Now, Galera provi provides uh, another, um, another system variable called WSREP slave threads. Using this, you can start multiple, uh, multiple threads or multiple applier threads, which will try to apply the right sets in parallel on all the nodes. So, and uh, so the question is, how many applied threads do we need? Because uh, every uh, application will have their own load and uh, stuff. So there is a, a status variable called WSREP third depth distance. It basically tells you about the um, average distance between the highest and lowest sequence number of right sets which can be applied in parallel. Now, this will give you a hint of how many threads you want. And the maximum limit would be approximately four times the number of your CPU cores. So using these two, you can check how many threads um, your cluster needs to run, how many applier threads your cl cluster needs. So, OK, so uh, MySM is one of the important tables if you're using MySQL. But uh, as I said, uh, MySQL is non-transactional. I mean, it is still used for storing all the system database, but it's non-transactional. And that's why the support for MySM is experimental. So you can use it, but use it with caution, because since it's non-transactional, the conflicts and all that thing cannot be rolled back. And uh, so by default, the replication of MySQL updates is turned off. You can still enable it with, uh, by using WS rep replicate MySM. And uh, now talking about cluster, uh, load balancing is one of the important things, as in when and how you are routing your queries. So. Uh, with MariaDB Galera cluster, you can use, there are many options, actually, uh, for load balancing. One of the uh, classical options is using HAProxy, using which you can route the queries to different nodes in the cluster based on different policies. And then uh, the second option is MaxScale. It's uh, another tool from MariaDB Corporation which can be used to perform uh, load balancing. And this th third one is uh, Galera Load Balancer. It's from the original company that, ship, uh, that ships the Galera library. Now, uh, which load ba balancing policy is best? It, uh, best? Uh, it depends on the application's traffic or, or the pattern of queries that is running on your, uh, on your application. Uh, the first one is read-write splitting. Now, uh, this is something wherein you uh, try to route all the right queries to certain nodes and read to rest of the nodes. It's more of a master-slave architecture. And why this is good, because uh, just to avoid the conflicts. Let's say you have writes being thrown on all the nodes. Uh, you will occasionally get conflicts. To avoid that, 
uh, you can do this write read splitting so that write goes to one of the nodes and read uh, can go on any of the nodes. And other are round robin and least connected. Uh, least connected is the default policy in Galera, uh, GLB, Galera Load Bal Balancer. Uh, least connected is, as the name suggests, uh, send the next query to the, to the node which, is, which has least number of connections. Right, so uh, another important thing is how would you make sure that your data uh, is, I mean, it just outlives a disaster. So uh, the, the, the mechanism here is you have the MariaDB um, Galera cluster running in one of the uh, data centers. And now you can relay this thing to another node sitting somewhere in some other uh, data center using the classical MySQL MariaDB replication. So the red arrows represent uh, the Galera replication or synchronous replication, and the blue one is the classical MySQL master-slave replication. So what it's doing here is all the updates which are happening in the cluster, it gets relayed or transferred asynchronously to a remote MySQL uh, MariaDB server. So, so basically, we are using both the replication mechanism in this particular architecture or topology. So yeah. So I'll share some more configuration about how this can be done. But uh, yeah. Now, because uh, MariaDB server, the slave one, S1, is asynchronous, and it's somewhere in some other data center, uh, it won't basically avoid anything to, to the, uh, or, yeah. So here are the settings which can be used. Logbin is to enable binary logging because now we need uh, uh, the uh, data to be logged so that a slave can read that information because we are not talking about classical ma uh, uh, master slave replication. And log slave updates, server ID, uh, it should be same across all the nodes. Then other settings are for, to enable uh, replication using GTID and stuff. The limitations, uh, limitations, as I mentioned, is we need to have a key, a primary key on the, on the table. So in 10.1, there was a new variable which got introduced called InnoDB force primary key. If you enable this, uh, a, if a table gets created, if somebody tries to create a table without a primary key, uh, that command will fail. So it, it's just a mechanism to secure uh, that thing. And then, as I said, InnoDB storage engine is only supported at the moment. And there is a cap on the transaction size because huge transaction will incur a huge lag or stall the cluster. So you can control that using max WS size. It defaults to one gig. The second option is there, but currently it's not enforced. The max writes it rows, but it's not enforced. And uh, network partitioning or split brain, as, as I, al I have already mentioned, uh, make sure you have even number of nodes. And if you want, you can even use Galera uh, Arbitrator as one of the nodes. But uh, that node itself, uh, Galera Arbitrator is, is stateless. So it cannot be used to connect a client and start receiving the updates and stuff. Mm, Multi-master conflict is, um, as I mentioned, when multiple, uh, when you're hitting, uh, say, for example, insert query on multiple nodes, and the, the insert or update is trying to update the same primary key or same key, there is a conflict. Now, in that situation, the winner uh, gets the chance and the other transaction gets rolled back. Uh, to avoid that, um, we can, uh, if it's an auto commit query, um, we can set WSREP retry auto commit to certain value so that it just get, uh, gets tried again when the conflict happens automatically. So, and there is, 
Uh, there are some more status variables which basically give you information about where conflict is happening the most, like on which node. And based on that, you can even derive the hot tables, uh, which should be uh, updated like only from one node and all that stuff. So the, the options or status variables at the bottom gives you that information. And then um, it, uh, Galera cluster also dumps the right sets if it fails actually to apply them in, in a particular log file. Now these right sets can later be viewed through MySQL bin log uh, to see what happened wrong. So yeah, detecting slow nodes is, uh, there are certain status variable using which you can see or you can determine which of the nodes are, are slow. And then, because they're slow, you can, okay. I should be going a bit faster. Pitfalls is uh, make sure that uh, when the new node is joining, uh, in, in a cluster when a node joins, it basically inherits the data. But if that particular joiner node has uh, more information or later inf uh, latest information, it should not be done that way because it will lose its information while joining the cluster. So that's uh, this is one of the query I received on the IRC chat. And uh, application should be aware of this as in the, the auto increments are uh, non-sequential on all the node to avoid this conflict. So your application should expect that the auto increments will not be sequential all the time. And this is controlled by auto increment control variable. And another pitfall is the principle of least variation. Make sure that the configuration across all the nodes is as close as possible. Yeah. For example, SST method uh, has joiner and donor uh, concept. So let's say one uh, node has rsync SST, another has extra backup. So it will be a confusion, actually. So that's the thing. A bit about MariaDB project. We have our source on GitHub now completely. And uh, you can go to the knowledge base to get more information. And then you can even report bugs and feature requests on Jira, which is highly appreciated if you're requesting more bugs and features. You can even ask questions on MariaDB discuss list. And you can even chat to the developers and community members on IRC hash Maria channel. That's it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.